Good day. Uh, I've had some wiring changes done in my house and in this video we are going to show you three different charging standards uh, so that you can decide what works for you. The first is charging off a standard 110 volt home circuit which is 15 amps. Uh, the Tesla will draw about 11 amps I believe, 11 or 12 amps, that's pretty normal. Uh, the second is a 40 amp circuit, so a 220 volt 40 amp circuit. Uh, you can think of as a standard dryer outlet or perhaps a stove outlet. That's pretty normal for that. And then the third is a 50 amp circuit with the same type of uh, connector, which is a NEMA 1450. And uh, I'll put a little uh, picture up here explaining what that connector is. So let's get to it and, and uh, demonstrate what we get. So the first thing we're going to do is charge this very briefly on 110 volt 15 amp. So as you can see here, this uh, Tesla charger that shipped with my 2021 Model 3 Standard Range Plus is currently plugged into 110 volt standard wall outlet with 15 amps. Let's go see what that does. All right, so as you can see, this bounces around for a few minutes, uh, but eventually settles in at about nine kilometers per hour of charge. And that's what I've been using for the last Oh, five or six years with the half a dozen electric vehicles that I've owned. Yes, I've owned half a dozen. And yes, I've only ever had the standard 110 volt because that gets you about 100 kilometers overnight, which is about 60 miles for our American and British and a few other friends. Well, let's unplug this from the 110 and get it plugged into our 220 40 amp. So that is now running on our 220 40 amp. Let's see what that does. Now, by simple math, you would assume that the 40 volt would operate at about three times what a 15 volt standard house outlet will provide. However, there's an efficiency gain that comes from using the higher amperage. And as you can see here, we are receiving much closer to six times the performance. Instead of nine kilometers an hour off a 110 volt 15 amp circuit, we are getting 57 kilometers of charge per hour out of a 120 volt 40 amp circuit, which is just absolutely fabulous. So now it's the next day. And in the interim, I have changed the breaker from a 40 amp to a 50 amp breaker. I've used 8.3 wire, which is 8 gauge wire, uh, which is rated now up to 55 amps. And uh, so I'm perfectly safe to use it with a 50 amp breaker. Uh, and my uh, NEMA 650 uh, jack is also rated for 50 amps. So everything is good to go. Uh, however, you can see here, I'm not charging at as fast a rate as I would have expected. And I was a bit kerfuffled by that. And as I was recording this, it occurred to me that, ah, I'll bet the Tesla charger is limited to 40 amps. And I checked and sure enough, it is. So let's hear how that went. So if you look closely, you'll notice that the charging is only coming through at 53 or 54 kilometers per hour. And you might be thinking, but I thought you increased the amperage. That doesn't make sense. It should at least be the very same. I mean, the Tesla charger is the bottleneck here, but still it ought to put through at least 57, which is what it was doing when it was, you know, running at 40 amps, when it was pushing through 40 amps. Well, uh, in fact, it does. Uh, in this case, I'm sitting in the car, I have the screen on, the headlights on, uh, the HVAC is on and the interior lights are on. Uh, not to mention the vehicles in the state of readiness. If I let the sit for 10 minutes uh, and have all of that turn off, it jumps back up to 57. So that is why it is not showing 57 here. So it would appear that the 50 amp circuit makes no difference at all because the charger is only capable of drawing 32 amps. So even though I now have a 50 amp circuit, I'm still only drawing 32 amps. Uh, just to clarify this, the, the way codes work is that uh, the maximum draw on a circuit is 80%. So for instance, a 15 amp 
uh, 110 volt home circuit can draw a maximum of 12 amps. A 40 amp circuit can draw a maximum of 32 amps. And a 50 amp circuit could draw a maximum of 40 amps. So I was expecting to change that to 40 amps, but apparently not the case. Apparently it's maxed out at 32 amps. So I guess that's what we've got. So let's put up a grid explaining the different uh, figures. All right, so now let's talk about the money. Uh, what did it cost? Well, it cost an awful lot less than what uh, some people think. Uh, it cost me a little less than $600 Canadian to have a 50 amp, 220 volt, 240 actually, volt uh, circuit uh, put through to my garage from my house. And that actually did require some work. Uh, and uh, let me explain what that included. That included the, per the, the permit, that included the inspection, that included uh, about 50 feet of 8.3 wire, which is uh, 8 gauge wire, not cheap stuff. It also included the NEMA 1450 connector, you know, the plug. It also included the breaker in my panel. And the only other component that's required is the charger. But again, the car ships with it, so I just use that one. I could go buy a second one, but I don't see the point. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, different charger might look prettier, but I just don't care. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you go into the Tesla app and you scroll down, you will see something called charge status. There it is. Charge stats, I should say. And if you look at it, you might find some information that looks sort of scientific-y and interesting because it's charts and stuff, but it's probably way off for you. And it was way off for me. So you can see here that it says average cost and it's got my home now at seven cents. Well, how I got that was I went into settings and I changed it. It was defaulted to 17 cents or 16 cents, one of the two. Uh, Canadian, and that is way more than I pay. I have a contract with NMAX in Calgary for six and a half cents. It won't let me do half cents, so I set it at seven cents. So you get that. Okay, now, so you think, well, that's still pretty good. It normally would cost $183 for what you've driven in the last 30 days, and it only costs uh, $27. Nope, not accurate. Uh, because I have 12 solar panels, and so the vast majority of my charging comes from my solar. So that $27 was actually far less than that. I wouldn't be surprised if I spent far less than $10 on my charging in the last month. So uh, it's important to know how to use this app and how to adjust it if you want to get anything remotely accurate out of it. Now, I'm going to leave it at like this because, uh, well, this is sort of the worst case scenario. But you can see this month alone, I saved 156 bucks on gas and it's much closer to, well, it's probably much closer to $175 of what I saved on gas this month alone. This uh, installation is going to pay for itself very, 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 very quickly. And uh, I'm very happy with this, even though I, I put up with slow 9 kilometer per hour charge rate of 110 volt 15 amp circuit, you know, standard house circuit for many years. And I did that uh, on, uh, I literally had half a dozen electric vehicles. This is my sixth uh, electric vehicle uh, and it's my second Tesla. Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. So if you found this video useful, please click like, uh, subscribe's always appreciated. You can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Yeah, if you have any thoughts on this, just leave a comment below. Uh, we'd really appreciate it also if you would click like uh, and subscribe is always appreciated. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.